Welcome back, Watch fans. Today, I'm going back to my roots, and I'm going to review a vintage watch, and this is a late 60s, 1970s Gruen Precision. So before we actually get into the review, I want to show you a quick video on a little bit of the history of Gruen. Is this the year your son is graduating? Your son. So suddenly growing up, maybe with a very big growing up job to do that can't wait. How can you possibly express that tender pride that chokes up inside you? Isn't this the way? Isn't it the only way, really? With a gift that bears the proudest name in time. The Gruen Precision Watch. This Gruen Precision Watch. The self-winding auto wind chevron. There, just normal wrist movements, just turning his wrist to admire it keeps his auto wind chevron wound. He just sets it and forgets it. It winds itself. Here truly is the most modern watch in the world. 7150. But wait, is he stepping from campus into business, into law, into a position where the very look of success can be a step towards success? Then why not make your gift the watch that was actually created for the one man in a thousand, the distinguished wrist curve Gruen Curve X the Diamond Dial Curvex Executive. In 14 karat gold with five brilliant diamonds on the dial, $200. Decide right now to stop in at your Gruen Jewelers tomorrow. Choose the watch that has been America's most treasured graduation gift for over 75 years. Gruen, the precision watch. All right, hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, one of the first things that I want to point out about this watch, and I'm going to get right into the review because I don't want to, uh, no need to uh, delay it, but the watches um, are, this watch is really truly from a different time. They are much smaller, and I'm going to put it on my wrist so you can kind of see. I have a seven and a half inch wrist, and uh, watches, this is pretty normal for what you would wear at this time in the late 60s. As you can see, it is significantly smaller than what you might normally have. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, I still wear it because I'm proud of it. It's a nice watch, but I'm going to go ahead and measure it right now just so you guys can kind of see what to expect from back then. The case size, 34. The log, probably 18. 17 and a half. Yeah, interesting. Uh, is that even right? Ah, uh, you could squeeze an 18 in there. And the, uh, the depth, of course, it's mechanical, so it's just be a little bit thicker, about, about 11, 12, we'll say, 11 and a half. Um, and the lug size, lug to lug, is about, about 36 and a half. So this was considered a normal, maybe even slightly on the larger side kind of watch. There were a lot of men's watches that were even smaller than this. But this is considered quite normal, and I think you can still even get some watches, like the uh, uh, some of the higher end ones are still available in smaller size. Now, when this watch was made, this is probably late '60s, I'd have to guess. Um, the quartz quartz crisis was. I don't know if people didn't really have quartz watches in the late '60s, but uh, things were actually starting to get a little bit cheaper. Uh, there's a lot of interesting history about this watch, which I'll go through. Um, but there's there's a way that you can tell for a lot of these watches, right? The way that I know that this watch, I mean, this watch doesn't really have um, anything in terms of water resistance, but one of the ways that you can tell a watch's age is shock protected, of course, is Inca Block. Uh, some version of it, right? Inca Block is patented, but Inca Block came out around the 19, 1930s and was pretty common in watches in the late 40s, early 50s. And any watch that was made before 1963 said, uh, typically said that it was waterproof. Now in the United States, there was a class action lawsuit and uh, the watchmakers were no longer allowed to put waterproof because in fact, they were not waterproof. They were only water resistant. And that started the whole trend of how, how deep really truly a watch could could go. And then you had the whole skin diver movement, which is 
uh, you know, don't put it into EBIT into um, into YouTube because that uh, designates something else. But back in the day, it meant that a watch that you would basically just wear um, snorkeling, right? So not something you would actually go diving in. Those are called skin divers. And they were generally 100, 100 meter dive watches. Um, so this watch came from my wife's father's father. Um, it wasn't in the greatest shape. I've replaced the crystal. The face was nice. It is gold. Um, it's a little worn, but you know, it's got some character and I like it. I cleaned it up and I replaced the watch strap. This is a, uh, an eel watch strap. Uh, and one of the things that's kind of interesting, I get a lot of questions about this sometimes, believe it or not, but eel watch straps uh, are not magnetic. Uh, they do not have any electricity inherent, inherently left in them. They, uh, they simply, uh, that's, that's that. It's just a myth. It's no different than uh, a normal calf skin or, or anything else. Um, before I go any further, I want to talk about the movement. Um, but I have to open it up, so that's going to be a separate video. So stay tuned and watch the movement. All right, guys, I want to show you the movement itself. So I'll try and hold this steady. I don't have... Uh, amount for this so it's going to be a little bit jiggly but uh i'm also going to hopefully you'll be able to hear it run so i'm going to try to be quiet and get this as close to camera as possible And if you can't hear it, then I will overlay the sound after I record it. I'll get a professional microphone, but I think that's a huge part. The movement's always important for every watch that you have, but um, more so with these mechanical watches because it's part of the it's part of the soul of the watch. I really think. Um, again, this isn't the highest end watch. It is a 17 uh, highest end movement. You know, this is built during a time when. Uh, Swiss watches were kind of a dime a dozen, and that's just what everybody wore. And there was a lot of competition. Uh, companies were getting bought and sold, and this is this one's no exception. Um, the watch is old enough now, or I guess I should say recent enough, that it doesn't actually have a an import stamp, as you can see. There is no import stamp whatsoever. Uh, so. That tells me that it is probably at least late 60s, maybe possibly even early 70s. It's just what it is. Um, if I have an older watch, I will go into detail. But basically, uh, the United States was trying to protect its interests in uh, watchmaking. Uh, Elgin and some of the other companies. So they forced, um, they forced these companies to have a stamp, a three-digit code called an import stamp import code on the watch which was then used uh to uh assure that the watch manufacturer had paid a tax i'm gonna just wind it so you can see but um as i'll mention later you can also see that although it's all swiss it is, in fact, assembled in Hong Kong, which was very common for the time. So as you can see, it is a Swiss watch. Gruen is a Swiss watch company uh, at this point, and uh, at least at the point that this watch was made. Uh, and it is a Swiss movement, uh, but manufactured in Hong Kong. So that was very common at the time, and uh, it's, just, it's just pretty normal for this kind of watch. Um, not much else to talk about. I'm going to weigh it. Uh, I don't think there's a whole lot of loom. There's a little bit of loom on there. I don't think you can even really see it, but we'll see. So very light, 43 grams wet. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's it, it's a nice watch. We'll, I'll see if there's any loom, but I don't think you can even really bring anything up. I, I actually only see... Um, you can kind of see it just on the hands, the hour and minute hand, and there's really nothing to see. I'll put a picture up here if I can get it to show up later on. Uh, it's still during the day. Um, but, uh, yep, um, oh, I want you guys to hear this. So 
So this watch movement, I completely rebuilt. Uh, this watch, I, I totally rebuilt the movement. Um, disassembled, put it in a um, ultrasonic cleaner, reassembled and oiled, and timed it. So fantastic watch. Um, it is slightly higher than normal quality for the time, uh, you know, at least for these mid-level watches, because it does have a screw in case back. A lot of watches still have the snap back. So, but um, if you enjoyed this review, uh, please give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more vintage reviews, please let me know in the comments. I have a whole bunch of vintage watches. So I've sold a few of them, but it's what it is, you know. This one, uh, this one uh, I'll likely keep because it has some family uh, attachment. But um, please subscribe. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much.